Gable is all in on these carbon fiber antennas, and despite me proving that they make contacts, you guys still think there's something weird with it. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you another carbon fiber antenna from Gable today. And this one promises to be just as much fun as the last one. So a couple of really cool things about this antenna. It has a female mount on the bottom, and Gable ships it with one of their adapters. So it looks like it comes in a couple of pieces. So this is gonna be their M10 threads and their 3 8 24 threads. That seemed like it was longer than the socket that it went into. So depending on what kind of mounting system you have, you can get this guy all mounted up on your antenna mount. I really was trying hard not to say mount again. So full, full amount of adapters there for you because Gable's always thinking. And if they're thinking this hard about making sure you have the right adapters to use with their antennas, I bet they're also thinking pretty hard about do the antennas actually work? So the cool part about this antenna is you get a bunch of sections with it and they're all the same diameter. So nope, the top one is skinnier. So five sections and this top one here is a little bit skinnier. And what you can do with this is take your base and add in as many of these sections as you want. And they make a really good seal, so you know you got them in there right. So I'm gonna try and figure out, like, what is this one resonant on? And then, what if I add just one section? What if I add just the top section to the bottom? Yep, that's a thing. So I can have a finished off end on my antenna on both sides and still have it shortened. So I can make this any length I'd like. So now we're gonna go put this on the antenna mount and we're gonna figure out where it's resonant. So this is my RV mount and it's one of those trucker CB mirror mount deals. So which part of this adapter do I need? And it ain't that part, it's that part. Base of the antenna is going on now. To the top of the trucker CB mount is 23 and a quarter, which is kind of where the coax adapter is. So 23 and a quarter. All right, this is the coax coming from that outdoor antenna into the ham shack, and this is my Nano VNA FV2. If only there was a better case for this Nano VNA FV2 than this plastic thing that it shipped in that's kind of big and bulky. How about like that? Let's get this thing transferred over really quick because I need one of these anyway almost all the time when I do Nano VNA work, so there ain't no room in there for that thing unless I start getting into the plastic. Let's take a look in here. And what do we have? We have a little note. We have an SMA wrench. These things are so cute. And this comes from Add Subtract Customs, Jared, KJ5DTK. I will leave a link in the description down below where you can grab this case. But one of the coolest things about this is that there's room in here for your adapters and there's room in here for your calibration standards. And I always put the, the 50 ohm load in there and then the open and the short go in there. And then these guys come with some adapters. So we'll put the adapters in there like so. <clears throat> and then that one can go in there. And we've got our stylus. Our coax cable can go in there around the outside. And that leaves us with the magnetic shelf and our Nano VNA. Oh, I forgot about the SMA wrench. The SMA wrench can go in there. And then what you do is you take these guys and you peel off the sticky back, put the sticky side up. And this is to protect your instrument from a direct attack from above. Tempt fate and try and tap it into place where I want it. Perfect. All right, awesome. Close her up. Give it a little bit of love. And those are stuck on the inside where I wanted them. Perfect. All right, now we need to get our tools back out and I need to do a bunch of calibration and stuff. I'm gonna do that off camera, then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see where this guy is resonant. And at its size, I'm going to assume that it's gonna be resonant on the two meter band. So that's the band I'm gonna calibrate and where I'm going to plug it in. All right, that looks like a much better trace. It's three to one at the bottom of the two meter band, but it is 
below 2 to 1 most of the way through. This is 145, and we're at 1.74. 146 at 1.82. Some funky jumps there. 2.24 at 136, but that's out of the 2 meter band, so I don't care. Let's see, is this a dual bander? I'm going to change my start. I'm going to make that 400, and I'm going to change my stop and make that 480 dead flat at 70 centimeters. Wow. All right. That's suspiciously flat. So I'm going to change my start to be 100. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it just falls right off a cliff right there. 202 megahertz is where it starts to flatline. And that tells me there's something magical going on there, but I don't know what that magic is. I just know that there is some magic going on there. There really isn't much room in there for anything. So I know they're not playing any tricks. It's just the way carbon fiber acts. This is one of the middle sections and the top section to show you the difference in length. There is enough of a difference there. So we're gonna take a look at it either way. I can't reach. So this is the part with the little bulb on the end. Help this tape measure work. Yay, yappy dogs. All right, that is 41 and three quarters. That is approximately a half wave on the two meter band. So I'm gonna recall that last calibration. So we're sweeping from one to 200 megahertz and we've got a little bit of sawtooth action going on there at the beginning, at the lower half of the band. That's probably out of band. Yes, there's 143 megahertz at 2.23. I'm not really expecting anything out of this at a half wave. All right, let's see what it looks like on 70 centimeters. We'll do 400 to 500. And it's still flat on 70 centimeters for some reason. And I, I don't think it should be. Okay, let's go add a section. Listen to this. Pop. It doesn't really make much sense to add in one of the middle sections when it's about the same length as the top section. So I'm going to add in a middle section and also add in the top section. Then we'll put her back up. But it's getting to be too tall and unwieldy to measure up there, so we're going to measure it from here. And it's a little over five foot. This thing is so light. There we go. Calibration, back, recall, recall. I've got it calibrated from 50 megahertz to 500 megahertz now. We're going to recall that. And that is our start at 50 and our end at 500. And it's a five foot antenna, so I'm not really expecting it to be resonant anywhere, but it is still interesting to kind of look at it. So it's best part 225.5 megahertz, 1.2 to one SWR. There might be a little bit better right there. 1.12 at 288. Not really anything usable. Let's look at this as if it was a six meter antenna. And we'll start at 50 megs and we'll stop at... 60 megs. And there's a nice gentle sweep to it over that 10 megahertz span, but all of that is above 2 to 1. So you'd be able to, to get it into tune at a couple of spots with a tuner. But again, 5 foot antenna, I'm not really expecting any magic out of it. Next, pop! We're just going to add another section. And let's see how long this one here is. 80 inches. So this one is a full 2 meters. 80 inches, about 2 meters. So I guess we can leave it at the same... Sweep and calibration and everything. Recall, recall, we're still there, good. Yeah, kind of kind of an interesting chart there. Very spiky, very up and down, but at 80 inches, two meters, I'm not really expecting it to be anything to anything. We're still not at the full, full design of this antenna. We're just experimenting right now. Playing around with what we got. How does this look on six meters? Stimulus, start. 50, it was already there. Stimulus, stop, 60. Yeah, we've raised it up because we've lengthened the antenna. So we've changed its resonance, but that's a neat little curve. Some interesting characteristics of carbon fiber right there. And we're above two and a half to one all the way across the, the sweep range there. Let's see, our lowest is 2.65 at 58 megahertz. So you could tune that up. All right, one more section. All right, ready for it? Pop. Let's add in one more section. They give you three of these middle sections. That one's good. We'll put that top section back on. All right, now, how tall is this? She's 99 and a half inches tall. Taller than me. Taller than my antenna mount. All right, now we should see some magic. 
99 and a half inches, that's two and a half meters, which is about a quarter wave on 10 meters. So I need to calibrate this for 10 meters now. So we'll do... We still got that wavy pattern, 24 to 60 megahertz. So let's do 28 to 29 megahertz to get just the 10 meter band. And we're around two to one the whole way across. Perfectly tunable. Excellent. Start of 50, stop of 60. Yeah, and it just keeps going up and up. We were, we were down here, then we were in the middle, and now we're up top here as we keep adding more sections. That's a four to one SWR. All right, so let's put this away real quick and we'll get over and take a look at a couple more things I wanna show you on this antenna. Again, I'll leave a link for this case down in the description below and you can get this in a variety of colors. And they also make it for the tiny SA and the other nano BNA shapes and sizes as well. So I'm looking at this thing right now and it is $79. And what's funny about that is it's 78 grams. So it's a little over a dollar a gram. That's all I'm gonna say about that. We've got handcrafted antenna and it fits the GRA 7350T, which we did not do any of that in this video. So we'll do a real quick comparison after I get done with this part of the, the video here, because there's some interesting stuff on this page that I wanna make sure I don't get wrong. So it's 102.4 inches, I said 99 and a half, okay. It's really hard to measure these things as a single person with a flexible metal tape measure. So I'll, I'll give it to them. Good enough, it doesn't really change much. All right, so they talk about that satisfying pop and that's true, precision crafted joints that lock with a satisfying pop. Multi-band performance in a compact form, overall length 102.4, 76 grams. So they're, they're changing their measurements a little bit depending on where they're looking at it. The three center pieces are 20.67, the top piece is 19.33, the bottom piece is 21.42, and there's some centimeters on there for you centimeter types. Comes with the A adapter and the B adapter. It fits the Mark III tripod, which I really love this tripod. I've done plenty of videos on that. 76 grams, 78 grams. 2.68 ounces, 2.75 ounces. Here is their VNA measuring device, and it looks like it pretty much agrees with mine. 29.21 is 1.7272 on the SWRs, and at marker number two is 29.41 megahertz at 1.7, and I think I was somewhere really close to that number on my nano VNA. And everybody's test surface is going to be a little bit different. In my case, I've got my raised antenna mount, and then I have my raised radials that are 36 foot each. So it just all depends on what your setup is, what you can get out of it. And I have not heard of this GRA AT330T antenna. Let's see if this is even on Amazon yet. Yeah, so I smell a new product coming. So I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, maybe I should follow the directions and do what we're supposed to do. Let me show you what the setup is supposed to look like. In this bag here, we have the ultimate tripod. And this thing is indeed ultimate. There we go. Folds up nice and small for portability. It has both SO239 and 3 24 mounts on it and makes a perfect setting for this guy here, which is the 7350T I told you about when we were looking at the Amazon listing. And so that gets you the sliding coil so you can bring it into tune. And the cool part about this guy here is check this out. It's got these laser engravings on it. So you can make notes of where it's resonant on which band and so on. And then bring this back down so we can possibly get it in frame. I don't know. Watch out for overhead stuff. I just have this pine tree here. And she goes right on top. So you can use the carbon fiber whip instead of the stainless steel whip that it comes with. Let's see if there's a weight difference. There is the stainless steel at 84 grams. There you go. There is the carbon fiber at 69 grams on my scale. So we all know that a sliding coil, an inductance coil, a coil loaded vertical can be brought into whatever resonance matters to you with whatever length whip and whatever amount of inductance you add with the coil. I think Gable has knocked it out of the park yet again. We've got some weight savings. We've got some cool factor going on. We're experimenting with new materials. We're doing what hams should be doing. Can you drive with this thing on your car? Gable says 
up to about 62 miles an hour, which apparently means like no highways whatsoever anymore in this country. If you put it on properly and you mount it properly and everything is properly secured, then it will stay on the car up to about 62 miles an hour. So good 10 meter travel antenna with a little tiny bit of a touch-up tuner, which a lot of radios have built in these days. So if you like stainless steel, they've got you covered. If you like carbon fiber telescopic whips, they've got you covered. If you like carbon fiber sectional whips, they've got you covered. And if you like carbon fiber whips that aren't sectional and aren't telescopic, then they've got you covered there too. And I did a video on that right over here. I'll see you over there. Thanks for being awesome.